I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, February the 1st, 2016. A Palestinian man tried to stab IDF soldiers today in the West Bank. The attacker was trying to cross a security fence and enter the Jewish settlement of Salit when he was spotted by IDF soldiers in the area. The man tried to stab the soldiers who then shot and killed him. Palestinian media named the terrorist as 19-year-old Ahmed Toba from Tulkarem. Yesterday, three Israeli soldiers were injured when they were shot at at a security checkpoint near the Jewish settlement of Beit El in the West Bank. A Palestinian man arrived in his car at the checkpoint driving from the direction of Ramallah. He stopped and got out of his vehicle and opened fire with a handgun at the soldiers, wounding two of them moderately to seriously and one lightly. The soldiers were taken to Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem. The terrorist was shot and killed during the incident. He was named as 34-year-old Amjad Asakuri from the town of Jama'in. He was said to be a member of the Palestinian security forces. Following the incident, the IDF closed several roads leading into Ramallah today, limiting entry to and exit from the city to residents and those who work there from the Palestinian Authority. Ramallah is the seat of the PA. Later yesterday, a vehicle with Palestinian plates tried to break through a checkpoint near the village of Beit Or Atahta in the West Bank, attempting to run over soldiers who were standing there. The soldiers shot the driver, stopping the attack. The driver was injured and taken to the hospital for treatment. And on Saturday night, two Palestinian teenagers stabbed a 17-year-old Israeli teen in the back near the Damascus Gate in Jerusalem's old city, lightly injuring the young man. The attackers fled the scene, but one of them, a 16-year-old resident of East Jerusalem, turned himself in to the police several hours later. Another suspect was arrested yesterday. A historic compromise was reached yesterday in Israel to officially designate an area at the Western Wall for non-Orthodox egalitarian prayer. Israel's cabinet voted 15 to 5 to approve the initiative, which allows for non-Orthodox Jews to perform services in their own manner, whether it be mixed gender services or all women prayer groups. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had given the task back in December of 2012 to Jewish Agency Chairman Natan Sharansky of finding a solution at the holy site after years of conflict on the matter. The Jerusalem Post reports that Jewish groups in Israel and here in the U.S. welcomed the landmark decision. Anat Hoffman, who chairs the Women of the Wall, a group at the center of efforts to achieve equality at the Kotel, called it a historic day for women of the wall and women in Israel in general, and anyone who thinks there is more than one way to be Jewish in Israel. Rabbi Gilad Kariv, the head of the reform movement in Israel, told The Post that this was a first step, a starting point for full equality. CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt, lauded the efforts of Sharansky for, quote, sending the message to Jews around the world that there is one Kotel for one people, adding that the ADL also appreciates that much remains to be done to further religious pluralism in Israel. President and CEO of the Jewish Federations of North America, Jerry Silverman, called the agreement a major step forward for Israel-Diaspora relations. He told the Jerusalem Post this is a victory for the Jewish people. The promise of the Jewish state is that it will be the Jewish state of all the Jewish people. And the Kotel should be a space for all Jewish people to pray in the way they want to pray. CEO of the United Synagogue of Conservative Judaism, Rabbi Stephen Wernick, told the Post, we're now partners with the government in the maintenance of a national religious historical site and this is tremendous. It's a huge accomplishment. President of the Union for Reform Judaism, Rabbi Rick Jacobs, said the compromise was a result of the efforts of many in Israel who, quote, wouldn't agree to the second-class status imposed by the ultra-Orthodox religious establishment, as well as, he said, quote, by all of us outside of Israel, whose unconditional love for our Jewish state compels us to tirelessly advocate for a more equal, pluralistic, and Jewishly vibrant Israel. The first Israeli astronaut, Ilan Ramon, is being remembered today, along with his six fellow crew members aboard the space shuttle Columbia, 
who died on February the 1st of 2003, when the shuttle exploded upon re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. A special ceremony is being held in Ramon's honor tomorrow, where pieces of the shuttle on loan from NASA will be unveiled to the Israeli public. And tonight on JBS, we pay tribute to Ramon, and we also remember and honor slain American Jewish journalist Daniel Pearl, who was murdered on February the 1st of 2002 by Pakistani terrorists. Pearl's father, Judea, speaks to Mark Golub about his son on the Chaim tonight at 9. And then filmmaker Dan Cohen speaks about Colonel Ramon and the documentary honoring him, An Article of Hope, with Mark Golub on the Chaim at 9.30. And looking at our other programming for tonight, at 8 o'clock, New York Times columnist Roger Cohen sits with Haaretz journalist and author Ari Shavit to discuss how the world no longer sees Israel as David fighting Goliath and how that idea might be revived in a program of the Jewish Week and American Friends of Tel Aviv University with Linda Scherzer. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, we begin our JBS series Election 2016, where tonight Mark Golub is joined by chairperson of the National Jewish Democratic Council's Women's Leadership Network, Barbara Goldberg-Goldman. And that's the JBS News Update from Monday, February the 1st, 2016. I'm Tisha Bader.